What's up everybody? I'm in here at the shop. Uh, it's a Tuesday, we're closed. I'm just in here doing some miscellaneous stuff, uh, primarily tending to the 3D printer. I had some prints that are finished and I have to get some new ones started so they can run tonight. Um, but I wanted to talk briefly about something I found amusing, some of you might find amusing, a uh, situation I find myself in that has drug itself out over the last five, five months, something like that. Um, this video might be a little bit raw. I've tried to refine it a couple times, record it a couple times, and keep failing. So uh, whatever happens this time is, is the final cut. Line in the sand, we're going with it. Coming, coming at you. So, a close friend of mine, roughly five months ago, decided he was going to a tournament that was being held by some old friends of mine that we used to do uh, wargaming with, like playing Warhammer, Fantasy, and some, some other stuff. Um, I decided I was going to go along. Awesome, right? Take a vacation, get out of the state. I think the tournament's in Kentucky. Uh, we're in Southern Pennsylvania, so it's roughly eight hours away, I think. Six, six to eight hours when, if we drive, and I'm gonna be driving. Um, awesome, right? Gonna get a chance to take a vacation. It's been a super long time. Go play some games, uh, meet up with some old friends, be super cool, have fun. There's one problem, one problem. I need to have a painted army for this uh, for this tournament. I do not have a painted army. Most of the stuff I had from years ago got sold or wasn't complete in the first place and or is boxed in my basement. I, I don't have an army. Uh, no big deal, right? I own a hobby shop. I have access to basically all the, the main distributors. So, uh, and 3D printers. So I'll either print an army, buy an army, no big deal. Five months, we've got five months. Who can't get an army together in five months? So, uh, first step, deciding what I wanna play. So there's like 25 or 26 factions in the game. Um, and one super cool thing about Kings of War is the, the only thing that really matters in game is, is the footprint, like your unit of guys, like the, the physical space they take up, like as far as uh, width and depth. That's really all that matters as far as the game rules are concerned because you're not adding or subtracting guys from units, you just track wounds on the, the unit itself and its shape never changes. So one cool situation this creates is that you can kind of just cut stuff out of cardboard that's the appropriate size for the units you want to use and you can play the game with those. Super cool. Uh, it makes play testing super easy and uh, realistically if you'd want to play the game and not either want to or not be able to afford buying an army because they can be kind of expensive. Uh, you could in theory just make fancy cardboard cutouts uh, and play with those and I think most casual groups would not have a problem with that. And it's super, super neat facet of the, uh, the Kings of War system. So I did that. I cut out my cardboard. I made nice ones. I, I printed out little things, uh, glued them on there, got my cardboard cutouts, started testing factions. Uh, like I said, there's 20, 25 or 26 factions in the game. So, I started. Uh, one of them that clicked with me very early was Night Stalkers. I really like how they play. I like playing uh, fast, fragile, finesse kind of lists. Um, they facilitate that kind of gameplay really, really well. Um, they're, they're also kind of one of the genuinely unique factions to Kings of War. There are uh, equivalents, I don't know if you want to consider them that, but there are uh, parallel factions to most of the old Warhammer factions, like there's elves, dwarves, demons, um, the undead of various types, like stuff like that. Uh, there are only a couple factions that really don't have uh, an analog in old Warhammer Fantasy, and Night Stalkers are one of those. I think they're kind of like genuinely unique to Kings of War which is uh, appealing to me because it's something, it's not just like a new version of something I used to play. It's a whole new faction, whole new like aesthetics. Uh, so I kind of fell in love with them, settled on them. Uh, and this was five months ago, <laughs> five months ago. Settled on them, these dudes are cool. Started working out like uh, the aesthetics and models that I wanted to use. Wanted to go with like a tentacle, uh, Cthulhu brains and eldritch horror kind of theme. Uh, picked a paint scheme and everything. I, I liked the idea of doing like uh, uh, synth wave kind of colors, like pinks and teals and orange and 
purple and stuff like that. Uh, I just happen to have, um, this isn't a model from that army, but this is a guy. Hopefully we can get a focus here. Focus. Uh, but this is my ape dude. He's, he's kind of in the color scheme I'm talking about. I don't know if that focused or not. Hopefully it did. Um, he's a synth wave ape. And I just thought the aesthetic would be cool to kind of mix this sort of ridiculous color scheme with this like uh, grim, dark, scary, horror, eldritch kind of uh, models. Plus I'd be able to paint it up. A lot of the painting would be done with an airbrush and then just go in with like detail work and inks and stuff. Super cool, easy, no sweat. Five months. How could, how could anybody not get an army done? Well, here we sit five months later. I have not technically picked a faction. I do not have any models painted and I am not ready. So five weeks left. I made probably a dozen or so deadlines for myself over, over that time period where like, you know, Dick, this weekend, pick a list. This weekend, pick a, pick a list. By Friday night, pick a list. Wake up one morning, be like, all right, all right, we'll get it together. End of today, today, we're gonna pick a faction. Like, we, I, I started backsliding. It's where I wasn't even settling on a list. It's like settling on a faction. Uh, have yet to do that. I did technically settle on a faction numerous times. Uh, like I said, I was all in on Night Stalkers. Uh, changed for some reason. Part of it was that the list runs a bunch of flyers and as new players, uh, our, our whole group was new to the game. New players dealing with flyers was tough for a lot of the guys I was playing. Um, they can be a little unforgiving. It's, it's a little stressful to play against them if you don't have the tools to deal with them because they're just like kind of getting all around you and getting into flanks in your rear and your backfield. And it's a little tough to deal with for a lot of lists. Um, and that's part of the reason I started exploring other things, because at one point I was on like a 10 or 12 game win streak with Night Stalkers. Uh, so I wanted to give those a break, try some other things, and uh, it was kind of a double-edged sword, because I did try other things, and I did find some things I liked, and it turns out I liked damn near everything. Like pretty much every faction in the game, like of, of the 25 or 26 factions in the game, Pretty much all of them, I, I think it is a testament to, to the game design for Kings of War, pretty much all of them have some super cool stuff. Uh, they facilitate like a, a unique play style. Some of them aren't unique, but have like an interesting take on it. But pretty much all the factions have something appealing about them. So I tried them all. And I just got in this cycle where I'd play a game, uh, Nothing against guys I play with. Usually win. I, I did win a lot of the games I played. Um, so play a game, change faction, play another game. Or dramatically change the list that I was playing with. And I just did that every weekend, uh, so some weekdays, for five months I did that. I, and I ended up playing like pretty much everything. Even Ratkin Slaves. Uh, any of you that play the game know that somebody has done the deep dive when they've even even gotten to the Ratkin Slaves. So I've, I've made my rounds and fell in love with a couple lists and went through this cycle a couple times where I bought a bunch of stuff and or 3D printed a bunch of stuff, which usually involves buying a bunch of files. Um, anybody that tells you a 3D printer is going to save you money is lying to you. I've spent so much money on files since I've gotten 3D printers that I don't think I've saved myself any money on miniatures. Uh, but I would get, I'd get a bunch of minis, I'd fall in love, like get all enamored with a faction and, and some lists, and then I'd move on. So I have just like mountains of 3D printed and purchased uh, items for different factions. Uh, in later videos, I don't want to cover that now, but in later videos I'll go through some of that because some of the models are super cool. I think some of the themes for armies that you could do are super, super cool. Uh, 3D printing in general, just for miniatures now, is, is an amazing thing. I'm so glad it's like where it's at today versus where 3D printing was even five or six years ago. It's just awesome, awesome. Um, but to the situation at hand, so fell in love uh, with forces of nature, was like super into them. 
uh, fell in love with Empire of Dust, was super into them, got a bunch of models ready, and then kind of shifted to other things. And pretty much every change, when I shifted away from something, it was usually back to Night Stalkers. There was this ongoing joke amongst everybody I played with that, like, obviously, Dick, you're playing Night Stalkers. I don't know why you even entertain other ideas. Uh, so just kept vacillating between, like, New Faction, Night Stalkers, New Faction, Night Stalkers, New Faction, Night Stalkers. Um, and then probably f a month ago, I just, I, I don't even remember how I did it, but I just made myself do Abyssal Dwarves. I'm doing Abyssal Dwarves, sticking to it. I got all of the models printed. It was an entirely 3D printed uh, army. All of those models are printed. I wanted to go with an Obsidian Golem theme, got them all done, found these super cool like robot guys that are kind of themed around evil dwarfs. They were like perfect for Obsidian Golems. So I had four hordes of them printed up, uh, the super cool demonic dwarf monster guy that was like perfect for a greater Obsidian Golem. Super, super cool. And then I just like didn't like playing the list that much. I had to do playtesting with it, and it's a defense six spam list, and it's not super fun to play against for most people. Uh, some, some lists deal with defense six spam fairly well. A lot of lists really, really struggle, uh, including the Night Stalker list that I like to play. The Night Stalker uh, kind of flying list that I play does not really cope well with a bunch of def six. It just doesn't have much crushing, and, uh, if you, if you try to go in on a list or, or on a unit and don't kill it, it's going to turn around and kill you. Like a lot of the units I play just like cannot cope with like the Obsidian Golems. They really do chew through things aggressively once they're locked into combat. So uh, that kind of incentivized me to get off of that because uh, guys here were kind of sick of playing against it. So I, I kind of did some soul searching. I stepped back, I think that was like a week ago and we're, we're getting into crunch time. Like the prospect of having to model and paint an entire army in roughly a month and a half, the stress was starting to set in. The stress is thoroughly set in at this point. Like I'm, I'm getting down to crunch time. Uh, though famously, one of the GTs I went to when I played Warhammer Fantasy, uh, I played Tomb Kings and I painted that army the day, the, the 24 hours before we left to go to Baltimore for the Baltimore GT, I painted that army overnight. Uh, and it looked pretty good. Like obviously I could have done better if I spent more time, but for, for a 10 hour paint job, it was pretty good. Um, so when it comes to crunch time, like I, I think I hope handle that fairly well. Uh, but I did some soul searching and I went, again, it wasn't the first time I did it. Um, I went back to the coming at this from the models. And one thing that I've never really played was lizard men. I've never played them really in fantasy battles. Uh, I've never played them in any of the skirmish games, never in Mordheim, like nothing. I've never played lizard dudes. And uh, I think it's one, one page rules on my mini factory. Uh, if that is them, I'll put a link below for the, to the mini so you can see them. Um, they have some really cool lizard dudes. And there are some techniques with painting that I've picked up in the last few months. And I was just trying to think of like what I would enjoy painting, what would lend itself to some of the techniques that I want to use that I've been like uh, using oils. I've been trying to use some oil paints uh, with my miniature painting recently. And I really, really like that. It's something new. And I just wanted to try to find something that, that lent itself to that. And I think I settled on the dinosaur guys from one one page rules really like the models they've got a really nice balance of being like highly detailed but not like too detailed like some some 3d models can be um i think that is a theme uh with 3d printed models like some of them are actually too detailed gw kind of has that going on with some of their lines now it's like too much detail and they're actually like frustrating to paint because of that and uh, i think these guys are, are a nice balance Gonna give me an opportunity to do some cool basing. I've never done like jungle basing or basing with like a lot of foliage on it. Um, and because they're reptiles, 
you can pretty much use any color palette you'd want to. Like, you can make almost anything look normal on lizards because uh, in nature they do have like a wide, wild variety of colors that, that you see them in. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some follow-ups to this. I just wanted to do this as like an initial uh, catching everybody up to where I'm not, where I'm not at currently. Um, so we're gonna leave it there before I, I ramble too long and ruin this video. But uh, hopefully I've had an opportunity to mix some shots in this video of some of the minis that we're talking about and some of the minis that I, I wanna be doing here. But uh, the prints that I'm tending to today, I'm gonna go start another uh, set of prints right now actually, are some of these dinosaur guys. And the ones that I had printed out so far look super freaking cool. Um, I've got a custom mix of, of resin worked out that I like that's like nice crisp detail but it's still like pretty durable uh, maintains some flexibility and stuff and that combined the f with the fact that you can either print these as multi-part and do the assembly yourself or they have like combined models where they're single piece single pose um, I'm doing them that way because I don't have time to be uh, custom posing the 75 or 100 models I need to paint but uh I just thought that some of you going to the event would find this amusing. The struggle is real, the game is cool, the factions are all super neat, it's tough to choose between them. Hopefully, I, I, I was gonna say hopefully I'll have an army. I will have a painted army at this event. I will have a painted army that looks cool at this event. It is funny, I have complete confidence in that, like I know myself, I know I'll make it happen. Um, but hopefully it'll be interesting to some of you to know that we're five weeks out and I don't have, I have not touched a paintbrush to a model for this list yet. And uh, I'll be interesting to share this video with some of the guys that I end up meeting there so they can come back and see that I did in fact paint this army in like a month and, and some change. So uh, hopefully you find this interesting. I'll do my best to do some follow-up videos uh, hopefully one a week over the next five weeks so you can kind of see the progress, uh, give you some insight into what it's like to do some 3D printing. Um, I know a lot of you in the hobby have probably seen some of this already because it's, it's becoming more and more integrated in the hobby. I've been printing for about seven years. Uh, resin's fairly new to me, FDM printers, what I did before, filament and stuff. But share some of that, share some of the painting, uh, some of the techniques that I, I want to try out, which I think are neat and are, are new to me, as well as I'm sure a lot of other people if you've only used acrylics. But uh, it's pretty much the purpose of this video. Like I said, I'm going to shut up. Uh, thank everybody for, for taking a look at this video. I know it's been a while and there's not a lot of content on this channel, but I'm going to try to change that. Um, but that's it for today. Wish me luck, and we'll see you in a bit.